All right, before we get started on this week's video, uh, I just wanted to say a few words. Uh, this week, Willow's World has grown big time. So uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for all the love and support. I really do appreciate it. And I know Little Miss B appreciates it too. I'm going to be posting the custom powder coated tumbler giveaway video next week. So make sure you turn your post notifications on and stay tuned. Welcome to Willow's World of DIY. I'm Willow and today we're going to be reviewing the Eastwood dual voltage powder coating system plus I'm going to show you the modifications that I made to it to uh, make it shoot more like a professional gun. Let's get to it. Alright so this is the <clears throat> dual voltage powder coating system. This is what it comes with. Um, the gun, one bottle, uh, your controller, and just the, the wire is a grounding wire and it has a trigger wire to activate it which you know I could go without having this trigger wire um, I've, I've been a professional powder coating shooter for about six years and none of my none of my professional guns had a, a trigger wire like that I know why they do it just so people don't shock themselves but um, I just I find it to be annoying the gun, uh, you know, as it comes, it shoots okay, not not that great. It uh, the powder flies out and it, it goes everywhere, so um, it's hard to control it. And then if you take this this uh, diverter off, then the powder just comes out really quick and kind of pushes pushes past your piece and it just doesn't adhere very well. So I'm going to show you how to modify this system to make it shoot more like a professional gun. Um, I used a Nordson and Ericsson professional gun when I was uh, shooting professionally. And uh, these upgrades make it shoot similar to those guns. So here's what you got to do. I started off by putting a, a gauge and a control valves and a dryer on it. I think all of them need to have this installed. That way you can adjust your pressures right on the fly and you can see your gauge. All right, so that's upgrade number one. Upgrade number two is to remove Remove this, remove this top cap piece. All that, all that does is screw on. So we're just gonna unscrew this. It really doesn't do nothing. I mean, they might have it to hold the electrode, but they have it glued in really well. So I just remove that. And then I take a uh, one inch PVC uh, coupling and I sand the ridge in the middle to make it a slip coupling so I sand out that ridge to make it nice and smooth and then I take uh, I just cut the tip off the rubber off a balloon that little round part add a green one and a red one and I'm just using this for a, just a O-ring basically. I put two of them on. PVC pipe and I just slide it on these
We can put our diverter back on. Usually about there. And then we can push this back up. What this is going to allow us to do is to adjust our flow. We can pull this back and have it fan out more if we're shooting a larger piece. And we can also push it forward and have it focus in if we're trying to focus in on a, a certain section or a smaller piece and don't want to waste a bunch of powder. This is how my, my uh, Nordson uh, professional powder coating gun was. It had this little slip sleeve over the front and you can adjust it. This way it gives your powder more time to, to be around this electrode and that, that's going to give it more time to get a, a positive charge. And so that's going to give you better adhesion onto your piece. So you can slow the powders down so versus having just that off and straight shooting out, the powder's going to be flowing too fast. You want to keep it slowed, more slowed down so that you know it doesn't just blow right past your piece and you're not just wasting all this powder. Powder is not that cheap. So so that and that'll help you focus in. Get a nice jet coming out of here. That's not too fast. The next upgrade. Oh, I also put a uh, inline filter um, along with this this dryer. So I usually run it like this with the dryer and the inline filter. Um, if your powder coating gets wet, it's going to get clumpy and all stuck in your gun. It's not going to shoot. So you want to make sure that your air coming into your gun is going to be nice and dry. All right, next upgrade. I purchased these uh, small flow stones. It's just for like an air bubbler for like a fish tank. In a professional powder coating gun, uh, you have a hopper, and the hopper has uh, the whole bottom bottom of the hopper has air mat in it. So, uh, and you have a fluidizer line hooked up to it, and that fluidizing fluidizing this powder constantly, even when you're not shooting. It, it's always fluidizing in the hopper, and so that that keeps this powder moving like a liquid. And uh, the way they have this set up now. It just jets out of here. That's a that's a big orifice, you know, and it doesn't it doesn't uh, distribute the powder around very well. Um, so you, you don't get a nice nice flow of powder. Um, so I so I bought this. This is a um, I think it's 0.8 of an inch is how big these are, and it fits perfectly. So when you screw this on, the bottom of this is right against the bottom of the bottle and all this air stone will distribute that air out, you know, 360 degrees around the, the, the base of the bottle. So all I did with this air stone, I just took some electrical tape and wrapped it because they, the way they come, it's not quite thick enough to stick it to the bottom. So this is a brand new one. You can see it's not quite thick enough to stick into here. So that would just fall out. So I just wrapped it like maybe two to three wraps of electrical tape around it and I cut off the excess on top. Now this will go in and stay perfectly and then that's gonna distribute that air 360 you know, degrees. And I also, um, you know, I have different ones. I have ones that that are, you know, just normal, and I have one that I uh, hammered a nail. I hammered a nail through it, a small nail, and uh, that way I, you know, this is sitting against the the bottom of the the uh, bottle, so it doesn't really jet air out of the that straight bottom but you know I've just figured it would help the airflow a little bit so I don't have to have it run such high pressures 
but you will have to run a little bit higher pressures uh, putting these air stones on. I usually run about 15 PSI instead of uh, 10. It doesn't increase my flow out of the gun because this is being restrictive, so it's not, you know, it's not running 15 PSI isn't running 15 PSI out of the, the tip of the gun. Um, it's reduced down. So here's my, this is my setup. That's it complete. So my thoughts on this gun, um, you know, in its in its stock form, it it shoots okay. You, I mean, you're not going to get a professional coating off of it in its stock form. Um, it's just, there's a big difference between a professional gun and this gun and the way they shoot. Um, that being said, you know, as an entry level gun, I bought this, I think I got it on sale for $100 um, versus a, a Nordson or an Ericsson, you know, you're going to spend a thousand easy on one of those guns. Um, and you know, a lot of people don't have that type of money just to, to get into it as a hobby. So. If you're a hobbyist and you want to get into powder coating cheap, I think this is a great gun for the for the price. And if you do the upgrades or the modifications that I showed you, um, you 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 will have a gun that can shoot a uh, you know professional quality coating. If you already own one of these guns, you have to do these modifications. This is it's night and day on the way your gun shoots. You will notice a huge difference. You'll see a lot better quality on your on your coverage, on your uh, whatever you're shooting. Um, your powder will adhere better. It'll, um, you'll get a thicker coating without starring. It, uh, it just, it shoots so much better. So, and, you know, if you're into it for a $100 for the gun, $25 for the modifications, you can't beat that. It, I mean, compared to the professional guns, you know, you're gonna spend $1,200, $1,500. I hope you all found this review in, informational. Um, I hope you guys try out my modifications. These are really cheap. Um, I think this this coupling cost 92 cents, 98 cents maybe, under a dollar. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and also share. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Thanks for watching Willow's World of DIY. Until next time. I hope you all enjoyed the re this vi this video on the Eastwood powder coating system. Um that sucked so we're gonna start over <laughs>